embracing the strange. Today's illusion is mind to keep. If you're new, illusions are what I call my painting, seeing as how I'm scarred by illusion. It's only fitting, and embracing the strange is my way of saying to remove preconceptions, constructs, and create without judgment and or inner criticism slash scrutiny. I like the symbolism of this piece, although I think my concept sketch was janky. The angle of the body is off. It's not quite a three-quarter or a side profile, so the central point of this painting is compromised. Seated, the figure clutches its head in its hands, almost pulling the head down and stretching the neck in the process. The image is similar to that of an anglerfish. Here, the head is a sort of guiding light. Although there is abysmal backlighting, the figure is disassociated from its reality. The tension within the figure is all-consuming. However, the figure is patient with itself and is taking its time to keep the mind tidy and neat. I'm irked it's only now after I'm so deep in this, I guess you'd call it elongated neck series, that I've just recognized the similarity to an anglerfish, and I should maybe think of a better name, but it's just like me. I know my art has a meaning, often multiple meanings in one, but even to me, the depth of it is ever-growing and changing. It's why, no matter how weird it sounds, to say art is very much a person, whether it be a homie, lover, friend, I'm learning about myself through my art. It's sometimes sort of like a funhouse mirror reflection of me. But yesterday, I nearly fainted from a panic attack. I'm guessing, but I have generalized anxiety too, so they overlap in some ways. My sister's dog got attacked by my neighbor's aggressive Rottweiler. It was running loose, and my sister's dog was on a leash. The thing is, we knew it was aggressive, literally ever since I got it, and this is my sister's second run-in with a Rottweiler. One bit her three or four years ago. Unprovoked. Completely unprovoked. I had an incident on the sidewalk where I heard its chain. At one point they had it on a tie-down, but I was already past their house and I couldn't see it because my other neighbor has a horde of cars he works on that obscure the view of the Rottweiler's yard. Sometimes it was in this enclosure, sometimes it was on the tie-down, sometimes it was just loose, so I was really anxious really to be on that side of the street anyway. And when it was loose, it would stand on its hind legs with its paws on the fence, like jumping and growling. And they used to say the rattle of the tie-down chain paired with the growling and the snarling set me off, and I really fainted on the sidewalk. It was by the grace of God my legs didn't give out, but it was like I really experienced that cartoon effect of like the whiteout, light-headed, stagger woozies. But all I could think of after googling dog attack laws in the state of Ohio and dog attack statistics, Rottweilers are the second most common attack dog to pit bulls and also known to attack unprovoked. So I was thinking of my painting knots, then obtrusive knots. My stomach was so messed up. I felt weak and kept tremoring. Me being myself was like, my shoulder chakra hurts. Insight by feel, that painting really fits too. And a smidge of lust of guts, because the whole time I was like, how can I make this experience something positive in a way? <laughs> and I was like, you know, thinking of paintings like oracle cards or something that did it for me. I swear, I feel chakras. If you're in tune with your body, you just feel them. But that's just my opinion. I often get pangs in my chakras, and that's how I know, like, I done fucked up. And I must retreat, like, the hermit that I am and who I was born to be. So if you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on. So I will in my next video. Thank you for watching.